Right, lads, uh, games of the weekend. Uh, we'll start with the Intermediate Championship. So uh, it's a double header in Netwatch Cullen Park on Saturday. One o'clock sees Nave Owen up against Carroll Town. And then 2.45, it is Nave Reeve versus Manus Rangers. Uh, Stevie, I'm going to bring you in to be the correspondent on this, right? And we'll have to keep it snappy. But Nave Owen and Carroll Town, you're probably fancying Nave Owen here. I should have to, like, you know, look, we played Carroll Town a couple of weeks ago. We won well. We got a couple of softish goals, like, probably planted a, a bigger scoring than it really was. But um, uh, we played Maestro the weekend, Nave Owen, and, like, I suppose the goals again were the difference. We lane goals that there's no good time to lane the goal, but we lane in at three bad times. Uh, so look, you'd have to go for Michael Moran game. Then look, we're, we're going to be hoping we'll be able to produce a performance on the day to like that's not going to be too easy. You know, Dara Toll is going off the team there. It's left 15 going out. It's not the, the four gone from the day was letting below Mount Hester Rangers, but that don't matter. A damn in my eyes, they're still going over 15 and and uh. They'll have Luke Roach back at say he wasn't playing the last day against Michael. So look, Luke, Luke Hurl against us there, there, yeah. uh, and Eddie Cody so, came on. So there's a few, not too, yeah. not too bad lads to bring in either. I suppose they're going to always be stronger, aren't they? Yeah, in the semi final, Lucas Dye Dogger produced that license. <laughs> I like the way you use the PG terminology. That uh, <laughs> we've heard it, we've heard it say other ways from you before, right? So yeah, the senior games then, uh, just sorry, just a quick one on the junior. So that's just a playoff involved there. So we are supposed to have a game of uh, is it Rangers versus Palace slash St. Mullins for Sunday, but I don't know, is the the <laughs> the Palace slash St. Mullins game going to be played before that? So I, I don't know, yeah, so, I, th- I, th- I think it was due to there might have been a walkover in that group, and I think then scores when it was a three-way playoff then i think that had to be decided that way rather than scoring different so um yeah i think it's the draw the pull i say who was pulled out of the hat was bagging some gales top the group isn't that right stevie then as a result and then um yeah you've seen what that carol g yeah. up last night so uh, even though pa- pal beat them in the last game pal beat them in the last game to um to put themselves in the hunt and thought they were out actually as of friday night themselves but then when they looked at it then they were back in so That'll be an interesting one. St. Mullins and themselves only three points in, I think, uh, a couple of weeks ago, or three or four points the first game of that championship. And probably maybe St. Mullins might have gained a few, but I'd say Pal with the extra few weeks of hurling won't be too bad either. That'll be tight. Well, to tell you, all right. We always say juniors are unpredictable. We don't even know if the matches are played or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Um, right, so uh, those intermediate games we've, we've gone through. Thanks for that, Stevie. So, Senior then, lads, on Sunday, uh, 2.30 is St. Mullins and Binding Sound Gales, and then 4.15 it is Nave Owen and Monster Rangers. So, yeah, we'll start in the order of when they're taking place. Binding Sound Gales, St. Mullins. Right, I'm going to put my neck on the chopping block here first anyway. Uh, so the first thing you have to say to yourself is how fit are the Binding Sound lads going to be? You know, they didn't play the weekend. Are they going to be fully right? Craig looked like he did a bad enough ankle injury um, in that game against Ballon Killen. Or you'd be talking probably three weeks at that point. Is it enough? I don't know the extent of the damage. Jamie Clark, I don't know how bad his injury is, right? So th- those are big, big variables. If Binding Sound are going to win that game, all those lads you mentioned have to be fully right, in my opinion. Simple as that. Uh, equally, uh, there's a question mark over how fit is Mouse like. Uh, the last day answered it fairly emphatically, in my opinion. So if he's 75% or 80%, Binding Sound have a little bit of thinking to do. Um all things considered, like obviously there's big improvements at Binance Town and St. Mullins, I feel, have improved massively due to the reset of the balance of their team. There's not going to be much in it. I'm just going to side with St. Mullins, though. Stevie? I'd say I couldn't say a whole lot more different than with the injuries. Like I presume, like the way he's arrested yesterday, they didn't have to win the game, so there's no use risking ankles or look to. They can, you can do one getting out of the freaking car, like and like Styler got into that there, Milky as well. I think he had 20 stitches in his ear, so you could walk into um, a pier very handy out in the yard as well when you're sweeping it. I can walk into a pier very handy in the yard, you can't see the top of my head here, no, but anyway, um, <laughs> hey, the top of your head is blended into that lovely paint, whatever color paint they have in the ceiling. <laughs> it's all the one color. <laughs> Uh, for for the viewers, for the viewers slash listeners, I think Stevie had a bit of running with the pier. Um, thankfully the pier is okay, and Stevie's not doing too bad either. But uh, yeah, look, sorry, continue. I couldn't yeah, let pass what the, you mentioned. <laughs> I know. Thanks. Uh, look, what said with most as well. Like, look, you're, you're presuming he's have to get another couple of another week and a half under his belt as well. He's going to be coming back that bit sharper as well. Um, 
depends what the, the result yesterday. You know, in fairness, Bangus, they didn't. Uh, they made changes there yesterday. Brian Ocean didn't have to join her team. Like, you know, they were making changes as if that game yesterday was just a game and, and they dealt with it as a game. So, um, look what, what the result meant in the wind up. We don't know. They were, they were showing the semi final. They're back down to square one. Now we're starting where they were first, second, third, or fourth. It means nothing next Sunday until the ball is thrown in. You're back starting from level playing field. Um, I slightly still Sam Mullins possibly James Dyle back in the forwards and you know but then back to the question you said about the two boys is Craig Dyle and, and, and Jamie Clark they have to be on the field for anyway for Bagnestone to to uh, have a good chance of winning that game and if they are and, and they're able to get a performance oh, the, the good sneak but I, I just you're just too much imponderables. I, I, I give Sam Mullins a slight verdict again, but I'm after going against Bangus one three times already. And the last two times I went against them, the one so they can thank me, thank me, son, at four o'clock. Right, Joe, step up. Yep, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go straight out with Sam Mullins. Um, I think they're battle hardened. Um, they're this when it comes down to real, real championship hurling. I think they've proven their metal probably you know so many times and i think it'll be a big a big ask for for bagginson to raise their game maybe after you know maybe the slight doubts that maybe last sunday put in them um i think probably having mouse back is a mass a massive list a lift to st mullins even i suppose even you know assuredness on freeze even though um connor Kyo was doing okay and all but just to have him back for the likes of that and even that moment the one moment of magic that can be the difference in a game like you know he, like the catch and the hand pass they laid off for for the goal um for john dial against uh michael to more or less win the game um I, I think bringing that sort of sparkle or that factor to it just adds so much to them and i think they've kind of tinkered around with the team a little bit as well i think bagnestown uh well the la- if, even if the lads are back you know you'd wonder can is there you know a lift in them and You'd wonder, kind of like you said there, the mileage in the legs and some of the players, you know, you know, said like Dara and Niall Bulger and these lads have a lot of games in their legs as well. And you'd imagine St. Mullins will be a tiny little bit fresher that way. But I think Bagnestown will, you know, they'll give them, they'll give them lots of them. But I think maybe just that little bit of experience and, and maybe superior firepower will probably get St. Mullins over the line in that one. All right, so it's uh, all three in favour of St. Mullins. Um, Morning Surrenders and Nev Owen. So, yeah, look, we've kind of touched on it briefly. Uh, I, I've kind of said that I don't think there's going to be a massive amount in it, actually. Um, anywhere near the, the margin. I think last year was a very comfortable win for Rangers, wasn't it? To the yep. best of my memory. Yep. I think there's massive improvements made. We, we've mentioned that a few times at this point. Do I think Nev Owen are... Do I think they have one can can beat one of the surrenders? Uh, yeah, every team always has a fucking chance. Let's be honest about it. But in terms of what needs to happen, and we kind of mentioned it a good bit, like, and it's not even a disrespectful thing, but it really, I think, depends on what Rangers come to the table. And if they can put in a quarter, like they've done a few times in at different stages during the year, that one quarter, while being mainly <coughs> average in the rest of them, is after, after proven to be enough to get them over the line in games. So what has to happen here is probably a little bit unlikely in that like Nave won't have to be on for the whole game, like and no team are able to do that, right? They have to be on it for the whole game. And Rangers have to be a level off for the whole game. And I just don't know if that's going to happen. I just don't know if it's going to happen. So on that basis, I think I go with Mullins to Rangers, but I don't think there's a massive margin in it, lads. So Stevie. Yeah, I one thing I noticed yesterday with, with the Munster Rangers in the second half, when they were in front of us, they're half forward and pulled out in the midfield. I think they left three inside on three. Big gap. Gary Lawler could get the ball and bring back. Pile drive it over to the corner. Uh, Michael pulled back Michal Mullins a couple of times there. Some Cho Cho was in full forward. And LeBron called Tra- uh, Connor Tracy, is it? No, the ball never got in directly to him, but Michael had that, had that wax, we'll call it. Um, but then the tendency then, then if, if, if Rangers are getting caught they're, they're not getting the gap inside they'll shoot from long distance uh, probably what you said as well they'd have to have a little bit of an off day but Michel are coming bit by bit now bit by bit now we're winning one game last year and winning what the one this year one or two one game was it one. Yeah. Uh, you know 
So that's that doesn't tell you they're coming a hundred mile an hour, but they're they're uh, Connor Foley, John Michael Nolan. You said it there. They have to be in the puck out, so the puck will be landing down. Their hand has to be on him. Uh, James Smithers. Will he be able to get as much joy off of Dermot Bourne as he got yesterday? He'll have a tough day at office if he's going to. Uh, but they, they need to get a couple of goals, I think. And Rangers have conceded what? A couple of goals against Ballon Killen, clean sheets to other games, I think. Uh, if Mysha can get two goals, they're going to have a chance of pulling off a shock. Uh, but other than that, I'd, I'd say it'll be it'll be tight. It won't be much in it. I, I couldn't say more than sure four points, but they'd have to get two goals to win it. Go with Mullins Rangers. Might should get two goals. You never know. But if you get two goals, they'll have to stop Mullins Rangers Andrews getting two goals at the other end. So, Joe. there's a lot of ifs and ands. Yep. Um, right. Well, I, 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 again, I think for if I'm if I'm Michel, I, I make a battle of it, but I obviously don't. You know, we don't. Uh, you don't. Uh, you have to control that aggression too, in terms of you know not giving away a freeze and so on. You know, you have to temper that. And I think they will. I think they were very good at that yesterday as well. Um, I think a big key key for them is going to be stopping stopping Monster Rangers going short with their puckouts. I mean, what they want really is Monster Rangers, and the Monster Rangers have been doing more of it this year, maybe than last year. It's pucking long, but I think definitely Michael Michael won't have any fear of of even though like you know Eddie Byrne, there's a big man in the half forward line for. <clears throat> shoot me and Tony Lawler's up there as well now from yesterday, which you wouldn't know what configuration they'll, they'll end up with on, on Sunday. But um, I think Mullinster Rangers, it, it, sorry, Michael won't fear Mullinster Rangers going long. Um, and I think they'll actually, they'll want that. They'll want to make that middle a, a massive battleground um, because I think they know that, you know, in the game so far that when that has happened, they've been, they put them in with a real, with a real shout. I think getting their matchups, and I mentioned it there before, I think it'll be key in, in that forward line. Will Ross Smithers pick up Chris Nolan? I think he picked him up in the, in the group game. You have Owen Hosey, um, and you have, um, say, um, uh, Michael Kavanagh going well. You know, you might have Owen Redmond back in. You don't know in terms of injury. But even those two lads there, in terms of man markers, maybe for John Nolan, maybe might be on, you know, might be one, maybe Ted Joyce, the other. So it's about winning those individual battles there. Um, Michal Mullins might pick up Eddie Byrne again. You know, he marked him in on the edge of the square the last day. And, and I know I said it then. That I think I think if Eddie is if Eddie is out at centre forward and Mihal is on him as a centre back, I think Mihal fancy you know will actually prefer nearly out, out around there. Um, so I think getting those matchups will be key. Making Mount Leinster Rangers go long, pressurising that middle third. Their forward line, um, they're sharp enough. Their work rate was very good. Connor Foley the last day was like a new player. You know, cut three points in play. His work rate, his discipline, everything was smashing. And I think they need another big performance from him. John Michael as well in the other wing again. Look, like I said before, he's just one of these lads that we expect big games from constantly, you know, uh, because he's done it so often. And I think they'll need that as well. Um, their inside line, um, well, they got a couple of maybe you know points in play off us. Uh, you know, I don't think they were the influence that they were against maybe you know in, in other games. And I think you know they'll be looking to up their game there. You know, if it's Adam Kenny, if it's Dean Sly, if it's uh, Scott Tracy or Carl Tracy, whoever is in there. I think they'll they'll need to bring a little bit more threat in, in there to to really, you know, to raise to 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 uh to get the goals, get the scores to win the game. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I wouldn't be surprised if there's only a few points in this game. Um, I wouldn't be really surprised. I agree that Navon have been there thereabouts um all year. Uh, I think I said it before. I think there's a big performance in them this year. That yesterday was a performance. They did enough to win. If they can raise it another level, and they're going into this kind of road off, and everyone is saying, "Well, oh, Leinster Rangers are, are you know, are, it's a formality or whatever else." <coughs> Excuse me, I think that'll suit. Nave Vaughan. can they hold Chris Nolan? Can they hold John Nolan? You know, is Eddie Byrne going to clip over another three or four points like he's done before? These lads. That's the, that's the that's the six million dollar question. But going on on current form, they're definitely closer in this year's semi final than they were last year. If I'm going to call it, I know I'm going to call it. If I'm going to call it, I'm probably just going to go for an arrow Mount Leinster Rangers victory. But again, like like the rest of us here, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a different result or we see a draw or something like that. But it will be very tight, I think. 